In this video, we will explore echelon form and row reduced echelon form. These are forms that um, are often used when we are trying to solve a linear system or even just characterize a matrix. We can say a lot about the matrix when we have its echelon form. So in this video, we will introduce those two things. Um, and by the end of watching this video and maybe solving some exercises to go along with it, you should be able to identify whether a matrix is an echelon form or RREF and give some examples of matrices that are in either of those two forms. Now I haven't defined these, th these things yet, but look at, let's look at this um, augmented matrix. This corresponds to a linear system whose solution we can obtain by inspection, right? We can tell by inspection that um, x1 is equal to 3, x2, what is x2? It has to be 7. Um, why? Well, that first row tells us that 1 times x1 plus 0 x2 is equal to 3. So x1 is 3. Likewise with the second row, 0 x1 plus 1 times x2 is 7. So x2 has to be 7. Um, so we can, with a matrix in this particular form, get the solution to the system by inspection. That's one of the things we can do with row reduced echelon form. Let's, let's define these things now. Um, a rectangular matrix, meaning the matrix has any number of rows and columns. The, the matrix doesn't, have to, doesn't need to have the same number of rows and columns, but um, we say that such a matrix, a rectangular matrix, is in echelon form if if there are any zero rows, they are at the bottom of the matrix. If the first um, non-zero entry or leading entry of a row is to the right of any leading entries in the row above it. And third condition, all entries below a leading entry, if there are any, if there are any, are zero. So matrix A is in echelon form. There is a zero row, the zero row uh, it's at the bottom here. That's fine. Check. The first non-zero entry or leading entry of a row is to the right of any leading entries in the row above it. If any. So this 5 is to the right of the 2. So check. And, and the 2 and the 5 are the only two leading entries. Um, and third condition, all the entries below the leading entries are zero. So below the two, we have zero and zero. Below the five, we have zero. So echelon form, um, all three criteria are satisfied for matrix A, but not for matrix B. Because this three is a leading entry. It's, a, it's the first non-zero entry of the first row. And below it should be a zero for B to be in echelon form. So only A is in echelon form in this example. Um, now, a matrix is in row reduced echelon form if all leading entries, if any, are equal to 1. So all the leading entries are 1. And the leading entries are the only non-zero entry in their respective column. So um, for a matrix to be in row reduced echelon form, it also has to be in echelon form. It's a, a stronger criteria. So matrix A is in row reduced echelon form, RREF, because it is in echelon form and the leading entries are one and above and below the leading entries, everything is zero. Matrix B is not in row reduced echelon form. B is in echelon form, um, but the, and the leading entries are one, but above this, this um, this leading entry in the second row, we have a six, and for the matrix to be in row reduced echelon form, um, that entry would need to be a zero. Um, so basically, if we could um, uh, summarize what we just went through, the matrix in echelon form has something of this structure. So the, the squares can be any non-zero number, and they would be the leading entries. And all the stars, they can be anything. Doesn't matter. This matrix is in echelon form. Now, going a step further, if this matrix were to be in row reduced echelon form, all the squares would have to be one, and all the numbers above and below 
the scores would have to be zero for us to have row reduced echelon point. Which of the following matrices are in row reduced echelon form? This first matrix is not in row reduced echelon form because in RREF all the leading entries have to be one. So not the first one. Uh, this matrix technically is in row reduced echelon form. Um, there are no leading entries. Um, but all of the criteria are met. Uh, this matrix is not in row reduced echelon form because technically that first entry corresponds to a zero row and it's not at the bottom. So uh, that matrix is not even in echelon form. Now, this matrix D, uh, because of the six, this is not in row reduced echelon form, but it is in echelon form, if that's something you needed to know. Um, and uh, this matrix, last matrix, this is in row reduced echelon form because the leading entries are one, the entries above and below the leading entries are zero, and um, the matrix is in echelon form. So, you know, that's what echelon and row reduced echelon forms are. We've gone through how to identify whether a matrix is in one of the other one of the either one of the other forms either form um and a little bit about why there, we are interested in these things i mean it, when a matrix is in row reduced echelon form we can very quickly establish what the solution to a, to a linear system could be um, echelon form we will use probably more often um, it, 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 it it's more work to get a matrix into row reduced echelon form echelon form just just echelon form is a little easier to get to but anyways that's you know i'm rambling i better stop there uh so that we can go on to the next video